Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. Uh, today, we're gonna go through a bunch of different ratios, see what's going on between asset classes. And what I do is I usually choose um, something that is very low in its ratio and it's positively moving in the direction uh, that we want. Sometimes I just buy it when it's way down there and I know that it's going to be uh, a little bit of time before it turns around. So let's go through it together. Uh, I'll show you where the opportunities are in the markets sector wise. Uh, and if you guys want individual picks, you're going to have to sign up for the platinum membership, finding-value.com. Use the word discount in the coupon code, get a discount uh, to see what my what's in my portfolio. Uh, I give midweek updates. I do question and answer sessions. So I do I do a lot of that stuff for uh, the members. And you can see what I'm what I'm buying. We've had a lot of really good successful entry points. Um, some are up many hundreds of percents since I started the uh, website in March of 2022. All right, guys, uh, let's dive in. I'll show you what's going on here. Uh, I'm going to start with the precious metals ratios first. Um, they call this the Batman pattern, where you get the the Batman. Uh, that's usually a topping pattern where you're gonna go into a long uh, decline. And we've broken this, I'll call it falling wedge, uh, right here in 2021. Now, yeah, I was buying it down at the bottom in 2020, but <clears throat> right now, uh, platinum looks favorable to gold where we could see a move higher. Uh, it does take time. This isn't super fast, uh, but platinum's definitely more favorable than gold at this moment. Uh, the platinum to palladium ratio, Platinum is incredibly cheap to palladium, and it's now moving in a direction favorable for platinum to outperform. Uh, so that looks good for platinum. And then platinum to silver, we basically have this gigantic one hump, two hump, and then kind of the third that's breaking out here. Uh, we've broken out here, and we're doing the retest move, and that's right where I buy. Um, that's right where I buy. It's on the retest. So this looks favorable for platinum to outperform silver. Uh, if this were to align and happen like I think it is, we could see platinum really take off here. So that's what I'm watching. Uh, I think platinum and silver, um, both of those metals are incredible metals. Silver, because of its utility in society, and platinum because of it, how cheap it is on a historical basis. Gold to silver ratio it is definitely favorable silver. Uh, we've kind of got that Batman pattern that's happening. It's, it's kind of distorted, but that's a topping pattern that usually leads lower. Uh, we've definitely broken out of the uptrend line here. So what we did is we have an uptrend line. This is the long-term uptrend line in a disinflationary environment. There was the bottom, there's the, the top. That is one cycle of the business cycle. This is the disinflationary cycle here to the bottom. The inflationary cycle that's coming is from this bottom here is what we call it because silver is the one that's gonna outperform. We broke out, did a retest, and now we're breaking and moving down. Uh, so this is the expansionary phase and more data describing that that expansionary phase isn't done yet. We haven't gone into a hyper supply phase yet. So I think silver is going to outperform gold, and I think we will continue lower uh, in this ratio. Palladium to silver ratio, uh, this thing's been bouncing around. We've had a very nice move uh, for silver. When this goes down, silver is going to outperform palladium. But palladium is in short uh, supply, it's in deficit, low inventories. The shortages of palladium are the shortages of platinum. So palladium and platinum could go higher and silver could go ballistic, something on the lines of that if this ratio were to still compress, uh, or we trade in a sideways um, ratio, kind of what we're doing today. And they all go higher. Dow Jones to gold ratio. Uh, this is a pretty popular um, ratio chart. Let me get my scribbles out of here. And you can see that we've gone through cycles uh, in the 20s. We had a massive outperformance at Dow Jones and then the collapse, outperformance, collapse, outperformance, 
And we are still in what I think is a collapse where we could collapse lower uh, over time where gold outperforms the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Um, the reason it's doing that is because of the market conditions, inflation, and how people are shifting money around in the markets. So right now, uh, we're kind of just bouncing sideways. I do think that this will eventually work its way lower with gold outperforming basically the Dow Jones or stocks. Gold to oil ratio, it's still pretty cheap, guys. It's at 22.62. Um, this here, I think, is kind of a, this movement here starting here onward, this is a lot of SPR release. And they keep, they keep releasing SPR, Strategic Petroleum Reserve releases. Uh, but once this runs out, I do think that this will um, still compress lower. I also think gold's going to go higher too. So it's going to be a foot race here. It's going to be gold going higher and oil going higher at the same time. We'll see which one outpaces the other. But if gold outpaces oil, your mining companies will do incredibly well. If oil outpaces gold, then your oil and your energy service companies will do quite well. This is copper to gold ratio. Uh, with China reopening, what we want to see is we want to see this ratio go higher. Um, that's forms of strength in the economy. Um, I think that we are basically in that general vicinity here and that we could potentially head on higher. And I think copper and short supply inventory is getting low. Gold's also getting pretty low. So we'll see what this ratio does. But uh, generally speaking, when this ratio goes higher, the, the copper to gold ratio, it means that we've got um, economic expansion. And we've got a bunch of uranium ones. I'll kind of skip those. We'll go, we'll go, we're gonna go right to the um, ETF versus ETF ones. So here's uranium to XLE. XLE is a uh, oil and gas, and then you've got uranium. And if I were to just yank this thing down, uh, it looks like we have a support level down here that we are basically at somewhere in this general vicinity. We're going into a dead period and we start to see strength in. URNM, big kind of jolts higher here. I think that URNM has the potential to outperform XLE. We're in the dead period, so to speak. So uh, I would be looking at URNM over XLE. Uh, URNM versus natural gas. Uh, natural gas has been quite volatile. It's going all over the place. Uh, but I do think that these are correlated. And I think uh, URNM, looking at this chart over on the right hand side, URNM looks good to continue higher. Uh, if URNM wakes up and gets moving. URNM versus XOP. So let me yank this guy. I don't know why these things are up here. On some of my charts, they went kind of weird. But there's a good strong support level here. We're kind of playing with that support level. We dive in here. Uranium's actually looking quite good here. We got some nice big buying pressure movements and small selling pressure days. They're all small. Um, so I would actually prefer URNM over XOP. It looks stronger. And I'm a big bull in XOP, so that means URNM is about to wake up and be an absolute beast, I think. Uh, URNM, uh, so uranium in general, speaking. So, And I'm going through URNM versus everything first. URNM versus platinum, uh, this to me looks like it could head lower where uranium could outperform platinum, but this is an unfair comparison because it's URNM versus platinum, which platinum is not a leveraged product like URNM, like the, the companies. So I think URNM will do well. Uh, I think uh, URNM will probably continue on higher here. Uh, we've got a nice little kind of pattern that's squeezing up there. Uh, URNM versus the CRB index, another one that looks like it is squeezing up and i think we'll eventually break where urnm will outperform the commodity index uh we're quite eh, we're kind of in the middle for uh valuation urnm versus oih another one that's right at kind of this support it's right at through a support level through here all through here support kind of the last support level and looking over here, I mean, it's been battling back and forth. We'll see if this breaks to the downside. We could see an outperformance of OIH. OIH looks very strong here. So URNM looks strong against most things. OIH looks strong. It still looks pretty strong here. 
And then URNM versus REMX, URNM looks stronger here. Uh, and actually, it's uh, REMX is cheap uh, when looking at this ratio here. So REMX might be one to look at for a potential investment because uh, that looks pretty cheap there. And then URNM versus COPX. Um, COPX has been outperforming uh, as this comes down, but I think URNM is ready to to take a run for the you know run for its money. Uh, we've got kind of a support level here, and it's right at that support level. So I would be looking at URNM versus COPX. That's you. So you URNM is where I'd be looking. Uh, XOP versus REMX definitely looks like XOP is ready to break to the upside here. Uh, so I I would look look at XOP. Yeah, you know me. Sorry, I had to do that. So that's uh, we can get the dailies in here, and it can show me. There we go. Nice strong movement there, ready to break. Uh, XOP versus Mu. Definitely XOP is where I would want to be. It is in an uptrend against Mu, and I think it broke a declining wedge pattern. There's the big declining wedge. Yeah, definitely XOP. Um, I think this is going to go higher for XOP outperformance. Uh, XOP versus OIH. OIH. The energy service companies look better. Uh, I do think that OIH is going to kill it. It's probably going to compress lower. Uh, OIH could do incredible things. And that's one of the sectors I'm highly looking at for potential investments in. And you guys definitely sign up. I've got some really good picks there. Uh, XO P versus GDX, and we're kind of in the middle for valuation. Uh, if it's up here, GDX is the spot. If it's down here, XOP is where you want to be. Uh, but it looks like XOP is outperforming at the moment. We've got XOP versus crude oil. Uh, right now, XOP has been outperforming. Uh, we're getting a little bit of a pullback here, but I think that will um, change and resume higher uh, with a little bit of time as crude oil recovers. And XOP recovers. And then XOP versus COPX. Uh, big picture view. Expensive up here. So this is when you want to get into COPX. That's a double top. And then it's going to go lower. This is basically completed. And I think we're going to move our way on higher for uh, XOP outperforming COPX. Uh, coming down to OIH. Uh, OIH versus MU. Definitely OIH. So OIH is putting in a very good performance. Uh, OIH versus REMX. OIH looks like it's going to outperform REMX. OIH energy service companies look the best of the group so far. Uh, GDX. Uh, GDX versus gold. Definitely GDX looks really cheap down here. Uh, GDX versus REMX. GDX looks cheap and to outperform uh, REMX. Uh, so definitely GDX is looking good. Uh, GDX versus SILJ. SILJ looks like it could potentially outperform. So SILJ over GDX, even though GDX looks great, versus a lot of others. COPX versus OIH. OIH was a buy of a lifetime in this general vicinity up here where I was accumulating shares, and that's where the website's been accumulating, and it's been an outperformance. I think that outperformance will continue. Uh, COPX versus GDX. GDX is preferable. Uh, GDX looks very good and SILJ. So I think we should be looking at potential uh, potential investments in those areas. Now looking at TAN, uh, TAN I'm, I'm, I'm going to skip TAN just because TAN is so volatile it basically overshines everything. Uh, but uh, that's kind of what I've got for today. Uh, if I were to look at all those ratios like I did and make a determination of where I should be looking, energy service companies look very good. Uh, I still think exploration production companies, which is XOP, that looks good. URNM looks good. GDX, SILJ looks good. And GDXJ, any of those gold and silver companies. Copper doesn't look as strong, COPX versus some of the other ones. REMX, you know, it, it doesn't look as strong. Um, they can all, they can all, all of these sectors can perform very well. I'm just being ultra picky on what looks the best. Platinum is a physical metal. 
it's still the cheapest and uh, on a ratio perspective, and I still think it looks good to outperform all the others. So that's what we've got for today, guys. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the content. Give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Subscribe to the website if you want to join our community. Love to have you. And um, you can ask questions and, and you can see what we've got. So, all right, guys, we'll catch you later. This is Finding Value.